Hi guys, Micro here. This is my RuneScape 3 Tips and Tricks Episode 4. If you haven't seen any of the previous tips and tricks, I'll leave a link to the playlist in the description. So without further ado, let's get right into this. Tip number one is fairly niche, but it's super helpful for anyone who's doing clue scrolls without the Globetrotter outfit yet, and while they're going for the Globetrotter outfit. This tip is taking a costume skipping ticket in your inventory. Having the costume skipping ticket in your inventory allows you to do the emote and spawn Yuri or the double agent without actually wearing the specific stuff. Then if you put the specific stuff on when you speak to Yuri, it will not consume the ticket. One that is amazingly good for is Panic at the Haunt or the Haunted Woods. You have to have nothing equipped for this clue, but if you had that costume skipping ticket in your inventory, you can just panic and then take all your stuff off. So if you panic here, DPS down the double agent while taking off your stuff, right? And you just get rid of it. Then as soon as the double agent dies, take off your weapons. And as long as you speak to Yuri with nothing equipped, it doesn't use up the costume skipping ticket and you get a new hard clue. Perfect. Another cool tip is changing your camera mode from the default classic or modern into freedom. So for instance, I have the classic camera mode on now. It allows me to zoom out quite far, but it doesn't allow me to really move the camera like wherever I want it to go. It kind of stops at certain places like this is as high as it goes. If you go into your settings, you go to general game interaction. The camera mode is right here. I would definitely advise anyone changing their camera mode to freedom. It is lovely. Switching your camera mode to freedom not only allows you to zoom out even further. Look how far that goes. It's amazing. When you're doing particular bosses or you're running around to different locations, for instance, clue scrolls, being far zoomed out is actually kind of beneficial with bladed dives and surges in the correct spots. Something else that it allows you to do is it allows you to put your camera directly above your character. Again, this is really nice for certain situations as well. Even things like what I'm doing now, AFK and Hellhounds, it's actually really good having your camera like this because you can easily see any loot that you have on the floor if you're looking from above. You know how your max cape can have three capes in it and then your cape slot gets those bonuses? For instance, right here, my max cape has strength, range and defense for PBM. Did you also know that your support capes can actually have two different perks in them as well? For instance, if I use my Dungeoneering cape onto my support cape, it will consume the Dungeoneering cape and have that perk inside it. And if I did the same with my Slayer cape, I can now use my support cape as a cape that teleports me to loads of different places, right? So maybe it's not going to be the best cape when it comes to perks and bonuses, but for teleports, this support cape is absolutely insane. But you can also use perks of the same style to the other capes. So if you have a gatherer's cape, you can then put maybe your fishing cape inside the gatherer's cape. And your mining cape inside that. This then saves you some space. You can have the fishing and the mining perks, which are both really good ones, in the same cape, in the same preset or whatever. This is especially helpful for stuff like the arc. Same applies with the artisan's cape. Maybe you're going to want your fletching and your crafting capes in there. So then you'll have the fletching perk and the crafting perk. They're both really good when making arrows and cutting gems and stuff. Again, really good for a nice little preset or something. And finally, if you're not maxed and you wanted to get some perks in a PVM style cape that isn't quite as good as max cape or kiln cape, but something that you're going to use until you get those types of capes, you can just put some PVM perks in your combatant's cape. For instance, I can put my range and my strength cape in here. And then I've got the range and strength cape perks in here as well. This gives you a whole range of different perks you can put on your capes. I personally like the support cape the most because I love my clue scrolls and having the dungeoneering and slayer teleports all in one cape is really nice. But then again, stuff like the gatherer's cape, like I said, for the arc is absolutely insane as well. The only downside to this is you can't have five perks. So if you do wear this cape, it does not stack with the max cape passive bonuses, just like a 99 cape. There's something in RuneScape that's really helpful for PVM, especially higher level PVM when you're cycling through different monsters that you want to target. And that is actually called cycling targeting, but it's not bound by default. So some people don't know about it. If you've ever played World of Warcraft, you would hit tab and it would change the monster that you're looking at and target a new one nearby. 
You can actually do this on RuneScape. So if you go into your settings and you go to controls, in here there'll be somewhere where you can bind your cycle targeting. So if you scroll down, just above windows and navigation, there is cycle target forwards and cycle target backwards. To be honest, I only really see a point in binding one of these because you can just spam it if you go too far or whatever. So for instance, if I was going to bind this and I just bound it to P, you can choose whatever you want to bind it to. But if I press P now, it then cycles between all of the different people and makes your character face them. This is actually super helpful at certain bosses like Ambassador. You have the little circle orb things at Ambassador that are really annoying to click and target. And it's just frustrating to try and find them sometimes. So you can just cycle target to find them. Same applies to other bosses that summon minions. You can just cycle target the minions. So you're not attacking the boss. So you're now attacking something that it spawned. Really, really good. It's actually an amazing thing. And you can just cycle between everything. And then obviously once you found the one you want, you can just fight it and kill it. This is another one that's helpful using the GE. For instance, you're doing some PBMing, you've loaded up your preset and you've ran out of Saradom and Bruise. If you press buy and you literally just click the item that you want to buy, it will put in that item with a buy offer that you can then buy a hundred of them, up the price and just buy them and you've got them done and sorted. This works on any item, you just click buy and click the item in your inventory if it's in your inventory and it will put it in there and you can just buy loads of them. So if you're very, very low on Selfish or Bruise or Restores or whatever, you can just click it and you can buy it easy peasy, get it done, back to PBM. This is a bit of a helpful tip for mining. As you can see, there's a rock opportunity here, but it isn't that noticeable, is it? It's actually kind of hard to see when it's bright and everything like that. What you can do is right click your world map, go to your skybox and filters, change the skybox to something dark. If you change it to something dark, you can then easily see those rock opportunities. You can click them, you can get more ore, and it's going to be so much more beneficial to you, especially if you're semi AFK and you're kind of just clicking whenever you see a rock opportunity. Seeing rock opportunities and noticing them with a dark skybox is so much easier on the eyes. Yeah, it's nothing major, but it definitely helps and it is really, really nice. Something that's a bit more commonly known, but still a really good tip that I would advise anyone to do is favoriting your DNDs. We all know stuff like sinkholes and Gothixian caches are absolutely OP, but they only run every hour. Sinkholes run every hour on the half past the hour, and caches run every hour on the hour. If you click them, you can add them to your favorite D&D and it will notify you shortly before they're active. So five minutes before a sinkhole appears, it will tell you in your chat. Same applies with the Gafixian caches and stuff. This gives you a bit of extra time to get there and get your XP for the day. Marking them as a favorite doesn't seem like it's that amazing, but it definitely does remind you and it is really nice if you're looking to do efficient dailies this one is more of a tip to iron men rather than mains but it's definitely a cool tip for iron men that i want to include if you go to the varric lumber yard you can obviously make your mahogany planks here right but there's no bank close by that's where you're wrong this balloon network can be a bank if you try and fly with it and try to fly to entrana it will say hey you can't take these items onto entrana and give you a bank interface this then allows you to bank your planks, get out the mahogany logs that you need, and continuously make the mahogany planks that is literally like five steps away from that bank interface. You can just continuously do this over and over and over again. You do need access to the balloon transport system, which is the enlightened journey quest, and that is the only requirement to do this, and it's actually pretty damn awesome for iron men who are trying to train up their construction who need some planks. You can get a lot of planks done an hour this way. Something that I want to talk about that's not really a tip, but not enough people have, is a bank pin. You want a bank pin 100%, and you want to make sure that bank pin is in numbers. This is the most secure thing on your account. If someone hacks your account and you have a bank pin, it's so hard for them to get the bank pin correct. Not only is it hard to get their bank pin correct, if you check your pin settings, you can make the recovery delay 7 days. A lot of people don't realize that you can make it go from three days to seven days to cancel. This means unless you're literally not on the game for a full week, you're going to be notified if someone's trying to cancel your bank pin. This is really helpful if you do get hacked somehow 
as long as you play the game on a consistent basis, which a lot of us do, if you come back in a day or two, it's going to be starting the cancellation. You can stop it, change all your information, and save your account's stuff. This is so important. So, so important. Always have a bank pin. I know it's not a tip, but I needed to put this in here. I've had so many people be hacked and they haven't had bank pins and they've lost everything. Even when they've had multiple bills, they haven't had bank pins. I know it sounds stupid, but get one, okay? Get one. That'll be it for this tips and tricks video. As always, hopefully you learn at least one new thing. Do let me know in the comments down below if you have any tips and tricks of your own that you want to share in future videos. Do give the video a like if you did enjoy, and until next time, see ya.